Well, yes, uh, as way of introduction uh, and, and a disclaimer, um, you know, Democratic Socialists of America is a uh, Big Ten organization, which means there are people of varying political stripes uh, in the organization. Uh, you know, with that in mind, I, I think uh, what, what Ben and I are going to talk about is, is our view of things. Uh, our uh, interpretation based on our experience uh, in the organization, knocking doors, uh, you know, uh, doing all the stuff that we do in DSA. Uh, and, you know, that, that I think we'll get to uh, some potentially contentious points and we can um, discuss those in the uh, open discussion portion um, later on. Um, but without further ado, uh, yes, how about Ben for this slide? Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Jake. Uh, and yes, it is a big tent, huge to quote uh, Senator Sanders, uh, but we like that. So uh, take everything that we say with a grain of salt and uh, hopefully it generates good discussion. So we look at the world around us, right? Uh, working class people don't need us to remind them that things are bad. In fact, since the last time we've uh, Given this presentation, I believe things have gotten worse. Um, so we see bad things, right? The result of capitalism, inequality, poor wages, unsafe working conditions, climate change, war, gas prices, you name it, right? So I'm not gonna beleaguer the point. Everyone here, I think, understands that. So the real question uh, that we can next, you know, move on to is what do we do about it? Uh, is there anything to be done about it, right? Uh, you don't have to hand it to them. But one thing that I would say that people on the right and on, on the left agree on, and kind of one of my big gripes about that mealy center that they just don't seem to get it. The right and the left understand that it's about power and it's about stuff. Who gets stuff in our economy? Who has the power to dictate who gets resources and who doesn't get resources, right? Where we part ways, uh, very hard part ways, is, is the right thinks it's a zero-sum game and they don't believe that a better world is possible. Us on the left, we say no, uh, you know, and, and anyone who's ever worked in a restaurant or in a grocery store can tell you this, there's more than enough to go around. We live in a world of plenty and we just have to distribute it better. And we believe that a better world is possible. Uh, but again, the capitalists don't want you to think that a better world is possible. Uh, but that's, that's our disagreement. Um, so the, the question then is, okay, so bad things are happening, better world is possible. How, right? Devil's in the details. How do we get from where we are now to that better society? Uh, and I think that it's pretty, uh, it, it's pretty clear that we're trying to walk a, a tight rope or a narrow path on, on, on one side, you've got uh, people who are, uh, you know, going to be extreme, right? Uh, you know, and other side, people are going to do, you know, very, very small tweaks. Uh, so let's talk about the people who want to do, you know, extreme, right? Uh, you see them tagging around in my neighborhood. They say, you know, uh, elections, no, revolution, yes. Um, but, but I have a few points of contention with them, right? Like uh, in, in this forum, I'll entertain that, that discussion for just a moment. Revolution, okay, when, what time, how many of, the, of us are gonna be there? You know, what, what do we need to, to do it? What is our target? What are our goals? And they don't have answers for that. It's just sloganing. It's just tagging on a wall. They don't actually have plans to, to improve the lot of working people, right? And in fact, I find it really offensive that they tag this, telling people not to vote in black and brown working class neighborhoods. They, they would never dare do that in, you know, politically connected like West Austin, right? Why do you got to do that around Givens Park uh, when my neighbors, uh, you know, many of them fought when they were my age or younger for the right to vote. Uh, so it's, that's just offensive on that, that now. But uh, beyond that, you've got these people who are, you know, ultras or whatever. They don't actually have a plan. But even if they did have a hard target and set numbers and the tools necessary, they don't have the necessary conditions, right? They may say, oh, what it worked in this country or it worked in this other country. And, uh, you know, I'm not one to, to run down other people's revolutions, right? 
uh, what worked in other countries uh, was, uh, you know, conditional on the, the, the situation on the ground, right? And we simply aren't there in this country. We don't have class consciousness. We haven't developed a class formation for people to even do something um, nonviolent like a general strike, right? So, so we're not there yet. People who call for armed revolution by tagging the walls or just sloganeering. So that's definitely the ultra left, right? We can call that ultras. That's that's not the way. Usually it's a scam or some kind of you know high control situation. Uh, so let's let's talk about the other extreme, and I'll leave that to Jake. What what about our incrementalists, Jake? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. I, I think um, that's that's absolutely right. I think I think you know trying to apply the lessons of, of history in different countries wholesale to the experience that we have here in the United States uh, is, is clearly misguided. I think the other side of that coin is uh, in, in the, the pitfalls of, of uh, sort of a more gradualist or incrementalist approach uh, to overcoming uh, uh, the challenges that we face under the capitalist mode of production. Um, in, uh, in a in a in a very uh, general sense, reforms are a good thing. You know, there are a lot of things that uh, we could fight for and pass through the le the le legislature that would be good in and of themselves. Um, you know, you can think of a million examples. There are things that would just make life a little bit better. Um, but this uh, approach uh, ignores the question of strategy. You know, we have limited resources. We have limited people. We have uh, a limited amount of time that we can put into things. Um, so we have to think about uh, which reforms we're pursuing and uh, how they challenge the power of capitalists. Because if reforms are not challenging the, pow the power of capitalists, uh, then in the long run, they're good for nothing. Uh, because even uh, the smallest reforms uh, are going to face backlash from capitalists because ca capitalism is always striving for ever greater profits and uh that's uh that's they're necessarily going to go after uh even the most fundamental public goods uh, and that's not to mention big transformative reforms uh like the ones they uh won uh in europe uh during the period of, of social democracy in the 20th century um, you know, lots of countries built uh, fantastic welfare states and uh, healthcare systems, which uh, greatly improved the lives of especially working and poor people. Um, but because the social democratic government did not, never aimed to go beyond uh, those initial transformative reforms, now we're seeing over the past uh half century the uh, gradual chipping away of those advances um and the on with the onset of neoliberalism um so ultimately we have to seek uh to overcome capitalism even if it's not by some sort of ultra radical method like ben was talking about uh it has to be overcome there's no piecemeal solution to the crises of capitalism that we began talking about. Um, every reform that we win is going to face backlash. Every time a socialist is elected uh, to some high office or even to a small office, there's going to be a uh, backlash from the business uh, community, as it were. And, uh, you know, these are challenges that we have to confront. Uh, we shouldn't let, we shouldn't be discouraged by facing, uh, but when we face opposition, uh, but we should uh, be clear-minded about about this and not let ourselves uh, fall into the pitfall of of uh, taking comfort in gradual reforms, uh, because you know we have to keep our eye on the prize. Uh, this is a, an exploitative system uh, that is is frankly no good, and uh, it will continue to be no good no matter how uh, how much we reform it, because the same drive for profit. Uh, remains at the core um, and the only way that we can do away with that is by uh, building the sort of movement and the sort of uh, uh, class power that can eventually overcome that and uh, lead to socialist transformation. 
Yes. yes. So that's uh, thank you, Jake. Uh, I thought you were going to quote Eugene Debs there for a moment that the socialist is the world's biggest optimist, right? Uh, we don't get beaten down because we have this analysis that lets us understand what's happening in the world around us, right? You see the bad stuff happening and you understand that uh, it's not just going to be a little bit of tweaking around the edges. There is an underlying system of oppression that generates all these bad symptoms that we see, uh, but they're connected, right? It's capitalism. So this is why we support democratic socialism, right? Um, it's it's something that uh, I, I many times will explain, you know, somebody says, oh, I've never heard of that. What is that? Well, you spend, you know, eight hours plus of your day in this job that you don't have say in, you don't have democratic control. We believe in democracy, but not just in the political sphere. It should be in the economic sphere, in all spheres of life. You should have a say in the way you lead your life and the things that affect, affect you. It's your life. Uh, and that's, that's why democracy undergirds all of our work, right? Political, economic, Whatever we're doing, we should always strive to seek out democracy and uplift the voice of people who have historically been oppressed. Um, and what that what that means, and uh, you know, going back to kind of the idea of being strategic, is the idea of class struggle. Um, and there's a few reasons why, right? Uh, at at the point of production is where working people have power, have have a say. Uh, because right there, you know, they they depend on our work. They need us. Uh, the boss needs you more than you need the boss, uh, and and they know that, right? Um, so uh, the the idea of uh, the the workplace being where many different people, different backgrounds, uh, many different isms, I guess, is what people sometimes use the phrase. But people we're all different. But at the work site. That's where we have something in common. We're trying to get what we need so we can live our life. And because that thread unites us, and it happens to also be a place where we have power, uh, it's the perfect place to organize and to talk to people and, and talk about the things you have in common. Um, and you know, if you say, man, I have absolutely nothing in common with that person, uh, I would say, then talk about food. Everybody's got to eat, right? You start talking about what do you like? Oh, where do you get that? Oh, where's the good spot? Where's the bad spot? Oh, okay. Hey, prices have gone up, huh? You know, who's who's getting that? Who's getting that extra money? Is it the person at the cashier? No, it's the boss at the top of the chain. Certainly wasn't the person who grew it and picked it. Bam! Class consciousness is just entered into your conversation about food with the person that you thought you couldn't relate to. Now, why this is important is because we have. We have elections, right? Democracy, people think of elections, but there's all this time in between elections. We have to be united. We have to build a mass movement that keeps doing stuff in between those elections, in between those points of, of you know, political democracy. We need to have mass movements that do other forms like workplace organizing, mutual aid campaigns, pressure campaigns against people who have won the previous election. There's so many different things that we can do uh, if we stick together, because there's so many of us. Uh, now, working class, you know, anchoring ourselves in, in to the common people is, is, again, smart because it's at the point of production, but also it helps unite all the people who, who have so much to gain, right? People have been oppressed, our common enemy, the capitalists. Um, it was at a Red Square about a year ago, uh, somebody... Uh, somebody made a very good point that I hadn't considered. We were talking about the working class and they said, you know, I, I'm disabled. I can't work. Am I of the working class? And I don't know, but I do know that you're coming along with us because you're not the boss, right? So what, what we mean when we're talking about the working class, we include everybody, maybe people who are retired or children or people who can't work. You're coming along because you're not the oppressor. That's we're fighting the people who are keeping us down, and that's the capitalist class. They make their their money and and so much more off of other people's work. Um, but it's a long road, right? If we're going to be clear-eyed about it, it's going to take a lot of work. 
It's going to take all of us pitching in uh, to, to transform our society. But ultimately, we're only get, get through that sticking together, slow, steady, constant work, building a mass working class movement. That's how we're going to do it. And we have to. Um, and, and sometimes if you, you feel, you know, beaten back by a loss, think about all the benefit that future generations will reap from the work that you're doing now. Just the same way that we're standing on the shoulders of those who came before us. Um, so sometimes, you know, it's good to read those stories or hear those stories uh, of people who, who came before, as we can see in this lovely illustration on the slide. Jake? Yeah, I think that's that's a great way to put it. Um, yeah, we've got we've got some introductory uh, readings on uh, on the slide here. I'll show those in the chat. Um, but yeah, just a little more uh, general reading on the subject uh, that will hopefully spark some more thought uh, in everyone's brains. Um, but yes, thank you very much. Uh, and now we'll move on to the uh, discussion portion. Thank you.